before we get into anything, let me show you guys the unprocessed drums and the processed drums. So that's the unprocessed one. Now check this out. So as you can see, there is a difference in the way they sound and I'm gonna show you guys how I got that sound. Starting off with the EQ. So over on the left side of the EQ, I added a high pass filter and that was to take out a bunch of the sub frequencies that I really didn't need in the mix. There aren't too many monitors that people are gonna listen to your music on where they can even generate sounds at this low of a frequency. So I just took it out and I kind of made up some of the bass that I lost right here around 56 Hertz. And that just made the kick drum knock a little bit harder. Now moving on a little bit more towards the right in the middle, you can see that I raised this section up right here around 200 Hertz. So this is actually the base of the snare. And I really want the snare to have some, some in it. So moving on a little bit more to the right, you'll see that we took out some frequencies. So as you can see, I took out around 300 to 400 Hertz. And that was just a, a Lot of the muddiness that i didn't want in the drums so that can be a lot of mud coming from the kick or the snare or even both so that's why i took that out and then moving on to the right you can see we took out some higher end frequencies and then added a low pass filter all the way to the right so this is so i can kind of shape up the hi-hat so there's an open hi-hat that plays with this sample and it could be quite obnoxious if i just had that playing at full volume so that's why i took out a lot of these higher frequencies so let me show you the before and the after adding the EQ. So as you can see, the EQ8 does a lot to the sound. This is where I spend most of the time uh, processing the drums because you can get the most results out of the EQ8. So moving on to the next step, we have compression. Now we use compression to lower the transients. And if you don't know what the transient is, it's basically the beginning part when a sound hits in the drum break. So for example, right here, this snare drum, the transient starts right where my mouse is. And that can be quite loud at times. So we use a compressor to take those transients down and get them to a more appropriate decibel level. So let me show you how that will look. So as you can see, when we started off, you really wasn't hearing anything, but as we got lower and lower, the whole drum break just got compressed and it kind of just didn't sound too good. The way that I like to use compression is to barely take those transients out because I don't want it to be too much of a difference. I want to barely be able to tell and then I'll move the threshold back up a little bit and just let it sit there. So that'll look like this. Okay, the transients are really nice right there. So I'm gonna just move it back up. And that's perfect. This drum break came from my latest sound pack, the Soul Seasoning, where you can get a bunch of drum breaks that kind of have that boom bap feel to them. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to hit the link in the description. But back to the video. Moving on to the next effect, we have reverb. Now reverb is kind of optional. Some people like reverb on the drums, some people don't. For this specific drum break, I wanted some reverb. So I added 16% on the dry wet, a decay of 1.39 seconds, and turned on the high cut and low cut. And this is the sound that the reverb gave me. Real subtle. You don't really have to overdo it with the reverb. Um, you don't want to wash the drums out with reverb. So moving on to the next step, we have saturation. And for this drum break, we used tape saturation. To get the tape saturation, we used the plugin J37 by Abbey Road Studio. The preset that we used is mixing mid frequency enhancer stereo. And this basically just adds a raw old school tape saturation to the drum break. This is what I feel like makes it dirty. This is what gives it its grit. And I also like to play with the noise level because it provides a nice warm fuzz. So you can add a lot, you can add a little, 
it doesn't really matter right now because that's talking about another subject in this video so let's move on sticking around to the j37 i also like to increase the saturation sometimes sometimes it can be a little bit too much sometimes uh, it, the drums really don't need any saturation so i kind of add this uh sparingly and yeah that's it for saturation moving on to step number five we have noise so like i was talking about with the saturation i like to add some noise to my drums with my favorites being cassette noise and vinyl so over here on rc20 we have cassette tape noise activated but sometimes i like to use the vinyl noises as well just to add some fuzz some warmth to the drums and it kind of adds on to the nostalgic uh old school feel of the drums because you have this tape hiss going on in the background so play around with that and find somewhere something that you like but you don't need a plugin to use uh, noise. You can also get noise from samples on Splice. I mean, you can even get noise from recording ambient noise in your room and just using that on Ableton. So the possibilities are endless for the noise. You don't necessarily need to use these plugins. So moving on to the last step, that's gonna be volume. So on the RC20, since that was the last effect that I added, I played around with the gain because the drums just weren't too loud. So as you can see right here, I added two decibels of gain. A bonus tip that I want to show you guys is how to add some side chain to a sample so let's go ahead and activate these sample channels that i had and show you guys how you can add some side chain so as you can see i have some side chain coming from the kick drum how did i do that simple all i did was get the same drum break and have no effects on it well actually the only effect is going to be an eq8 i'm going to take out all the frequencies except for a uh, sub frequency that is only activated when the kick drum is playing so that way it's kind of like i have a kick drum playing whenever this channel is activated so i muted this channel and went to my chops put on a compressor activated sidechain went to that same channel and selected it, kick sidechain, and this is that same channel, kick sidechain. Then I just played around with the threshold, ratio, attack, and a release, and found a spot that I like. So that's gonna do it for this video, just a quick little tutorial. Uh, but if you guys have any other video suggestions for me that you want me to cover, whether if it's about beats or if it's about piano playing, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to get to that. But also, if you guys are interested in some drum breaks and some samples, go over to my website where I have a few sample packs and I just released one, which is where you heard these drums from. So, yeah, that's enough rambling. I'm going to get out of here. See you guys on the next one. Peace out.